Yes, Jordan, how are you? Very good. Now, George, I never thought I would be back on the radio, but here I am. Here you are. Yeah. Well, you know, the last time you were on with us, a couple times ago, you were on the phone and you got clipped yep. by yep. some source. Yep. And I remember at a conference you telling all of us that you could still hear voices, right. not ours, people in the background. Yeah, going, when you the, think when you'll the... get the message now? <laughs> Stuff like that. Huh? That's right. Uh, yeah, the, the phone got shut off by the phone company. And as soon as it went off, I waited for a moment, and it came back on, and I could hear people walking around in an office talking. And some of them were close enough to the microphone, they were talking about me. And some, It was something to the effect, and it's been back in 2005, but it was something to the effect that somebody's going to have to do something about him. And that kind of scared me, because yeah. I know it's government. I know, you know government's the only power that can interrupt a telephone uh, call like that and shut down the phone. Well, you have uh, stepped on some toes, and I don't know how many people know that the the Internet sensation, the movie Zeitgeist, is basically built around your life and yeah. your career, isn't yeah. it? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, Peter Joseph said that uh, it was approximately 50 million downloads. Well, that's, that's pretty... That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. Jordan, I'm holding in my hand <clears throat> all I've got, my dollar. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on the back... We've got this pyramid with the eye. Yeah. We've got the seal. And today there was a major story about symbolism. And I figured, you know what? Nobody knows symbolism better than you. In your opinion, what does this represent, the pyramid with the eye? It represents the Jewish Messiah. It represents to Christians, Jesus. Now, that's going to be very difficult for both Jews and Christians to, to swallow. But I'm telling you, when you do the homework, you will find that the word in the Old Testament, both in the book of Psalms and once in the book of uh, Isaiah and the Old Testament, the Messiah is referred to as the chief cornerstone the builders rejected. And twice in the New Testament, uh, Jesus is referred to in Christianity as the same thing, the chief cornerstone the builders rejected. There is a world of difference between a cornerstone, which most Christians believe Jesus to be a cornerstone. Mm-hmm. No, no, the scripture is in, you're incorrectly looking at the word. Go back and look at the word, and you will find that chief cornerstone, both in Hebrew and in Greek, means a triangle perched on top of a pyramid. So the eye on the dollar bill represents Jesus in Christianity or the Messiah in Judaism. How about the seal now? <clears throat> well, the, 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 other the side great of the seal, dollar. I think, is very interesting. It's called the presidential seal, the great seal of America. You will see above the eagle, you'll see 13 stars. And what do those 13 stars, uh, the configuration that the 13 stars make up, what is it? Well, I, I would have thought maybe the original colonies. No, well, yes, but what do the thirteen stars together? Look at it. What does it make up together as a as a com- composite? All thirteen stars together. It looks like a sun or something. No, like that? what star of David? I'm close. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I said the sun. That's a star. Well, yeah, but it, it's it's thirteen stars in the configuration of a hexagram. And you will see that the uh, 13 stars <clears throat> are connected to the 13 leaves, the 13 arrows, the 13 stripes on the, on the, uh, mm-hmm. on the flag. And um, so 13 is very important, and it's based on the Messiah uh, and his chosen 12. Jesus had 12 apostles, the 12 brothers of Joseph, the 12 tribes of Israel. And so when you connect the Messiah with his chosen 12, makes 13. This is why we had 13 colonies. No one's ever asked the question, why 13 colonies? Doesn't that sound a little suspicious? You know? Well, and yeah, so, why? Well, I mean, uh, so once you see that the, um, the layers on the pyramid, go back to the pyramid. There are right. 13 layers on the pyramid. Good point. Yeah, and so all of this has to do with biblical symbolism. Why do they hide things in symbols? Well, it's because it's kind of like um, an in-house communication. In-house communication. They understand. Yeah, they understand what they're doing, and they figure that most Americans are not concerned with this kind of thing, so why bother? Is it like a club that has a certain handshake or symbol or something? No doubt about that. It's it's something between them. No doubt about it. And, uh, And the symbolism is Masonic, 
And it goes back into the Bible. And as I said, the chief cornerstone in the Old Testament is a symbol for the Messiah. So what we're looking at is Jewish symbol for the Messiah in the pyramid, uh, because the word in Hebrew is a word which means a triangle or a pentagram, a pentacle on top of a pyramid. And as I said, in Christianity, uh, the word for Jesus is a chief cornerstone. The builders rejected. The word in Greek is a word for a triangle perched on top of a pyramid. But, of course, symbolism goes even deeper than that. Oh, very much so. I mean, that's just the start. <laughs> Absolutely. I want to talk with you, with the time we have left, and take calls as well, about the this economic mess we're in, and to get your take on our monetary system, Jordan. Uh, you know, I'm holding in my hand this dollar bill, which says Federal Reserve Note. Note. Right. What the heck does that mean? Well, a note is a, when you go into the bank and borrow money, that's a, you get a bank note. Uh, but actually, you know, in this country, there's, this whole subject is so enormous, as you know, as you well know. This is an incredibly deep subject. But in, in America, you cannot lawfully pay a bill. You can discharge a debt, but you cannot pay Explain a bill. Explain that when we come back. Jordan yes. Maxwell, our special guest, and we will open up the phone lines as well as we talk about symbolism on Coast to Coast AM. Next hour, scientist Nassim Herdamin joins us as we talk about all things in the universe. When we come back, we'll take your phone calls and continue chatting with Jordan Maxwell about symbolism on Coast to Coast AM. George Norrie, back with you with Jordan Maxwell. We'll take your calls in just a moment. Okay, Jordan, you were saying that uh, if you give me a bill, it's really not a bill. What does that mean? Yeah, because you cannot pay a bill in America. You can discharge a debt. It's like walking across the carpet and then touching a piece of metal. It discharges. Well, this is why when you're in the military, when you get out, they discharge you. All right. Because you can discharge a debt. You cannot pay a bill. And the, as I said before, can I say that to the next uh, guy that sends me a bill? Well, try it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like I said, if you give me a bill, uh, like you, uh, if you were a, a painter and you painted my house and you you say it's thousand dollars, yeah, thousand dollars, then I reach in my pocket and give you a thousand dollars in in bills. I give you ten one hundred dollar bills, so that's a thousand dollar bill. And so, therefore, you owe me a thousand dollars now. <laughs> and so we have discharged the debt. And so it all goes back to maritime admiralty law, the way the banks actually, in fact, work, the way our country actually works. And most people have no idea in the world how laws work. Do I, our leaders even know, Jordan? I don't even know. Maybe at the very top they do. But most people in government have no idea in the world. They're like anyone else working for a corporation. They just do their job. That's all they need to know. Yeah. And the boss upstairs takes care of the rest of the business. But... You know, uh, once you begin to understand how our government works, why do you have banks? You have banks because they're on both sides of a river. They're called river banks. What does a river bank do? It directs the flow of the currency. Because, you're, <laughs> because well, it's true, because your money is a currency. It's a cash flow, liquid assets. And once you begin to understand how you cannot borrow money from a bank, it's, a, it's against the law to borrow money from a bank. But I do. You cannot borrow money from a bank. If I go in and put $100,000 into a bank and you come in two days later and borrow $100,000 to pay for your boat. I've taken no, no. your money. Yeah, no, no, that ain't going to work. You're not taking my money because <laughs> if you don't pay but, for it, I'd out. No, no, that's not but, the way but, a bank. But, you know, according to Edward Griffin, who wrote a book about the Federal Reserve, yes, he tells me that. Banks are giving away our money, and they shouldn't be. Well, in a, in a matter of speaking, but the point being is that you cannot borrow money from a bank. What they do when you buy a new car, uh, the new car has a uh, has an appraisal okay. paperwork, and so the appraisal says that your new car is worth thirty eight thousand dollars. Therefore, you have what is called commercial paper that's worth thirty eight thousand dollars. What the bank will do if you've got good credit, they will open up a bank account in your name, but you don't know it. They'll open up a bank account and will forge your name. They will write your name and print your, and write your name on the new bank account. Now you have a bank account and you didn't even know it. Now they take that $38,000 worth of commercial paper and put it into the bank account. Now you have $38,000 in, in the bank. Of course, they're holding 
They're holding They're it. holding it. So now they write you out a check for $38,000 and you give it to the car company. And now it's all on paper. They haven't given you anything. They haven't loaned you anything. They took the, the value of the car, which is commercial paper, put it into the bank account, write a check on that, and now you think that they loaned you money. No, no. Banks do not loan Yet money Yet you ever. have to pay them the 38 yes. well, grand plus right. interest. That's exactly right. It's just a game. It's just a Let, business. Let's take some calls here with Jordan Maxwell. We'll pick it up by going to Jane in San Jose, California. Hey, Jane, how are you? Oh, very good. Thanks, George. Yeah, I'm so glad uh, you have Jordan on tonight. Um, He's going to be out in your neighborhood in September, by the way. Oh, yes, I know. I'm planning on going. Um, Yeah, it's great. Um, The one comment, though, that I do have is um, uh, he's missing a a little piece of information. Well, I haven't given it all yet. (laughs) I'm holding him back, but go ahead. (laughs) Um, The I on the back of the dollar bill, if you take it to a photocopy machine and, and, and just, you know, enlarge it, okay? Enlarge I know. It, it becomes you... a reptile eye, right? Yes, it's reptilian. So it's yeah. really the, the eye of the Antichrist. What, not what, do, what do you mean it's a reptilian eye? Well, I mean, I've heard this many years no. ago. She's, is she right? No. Okay, let me explain it. No, no, let me explain it. Okay. All right. You take that fo- uh, that photo, okay, yeah. of that eye, and you compare it with like a Geico ad eye, like of, of a Geico. It's got rings of black, then a ring of white, a, bla- a ring of black, and then a ring of white, and then huh. right in the middle, there's all this. There's um, a bulging black, um, you know, black in the middle of it. You've got to really blow that thing up, and you'll, you know, in um, with your photocopy machine, you will see it is it is a reptilian eye. And then you look at all the scales, and then um, there's no eyelashes, but there's like this accordion. So what's your theory here, Jane? You say it's the Antichrist? Yeah, it's, it's the Antichrist. Um, whoever's um, in the Federal Reserve, they, they must be into the Antichrist, you know, the one world government or whatever. Um, and so, anyway. Well, this like, this was designed, though, Jordan, oh, a yeah. zillion years ago. Yeah, that was, uh, it was what do you think of What do you think of her theory? Well, I mean, I understand. That's why I, I interjected that, that. I already have heard this story, but I'm just telling you. You don't what, agree with it. Well, I'm just saying what the reference works, if you go to a library and go to any Christian seminary and go through all the reference works, you will see that the eye on the top of the dollar bill, I mean, on the top of the pyramid, represents the Messiah of the Old Testament and Jesus and the New. That's but, the but that fact sounds that, like a good thing. Well, of course it is. And so, uh, as a matter of fact, the pyramid is actually this uh, King Solomon's temple. But most people do not study the subject enough to understand what I'm saying. But if you go into the reference works and look at the words and look them up, you will find that there's a whole different understanding among the academics of the world and the ancient religions than what we are you know, used to understanding today. Hill, Force, uh, Hill Air Force in Utah. Mark, first-time caller. Hi, Mark. Hi. Um, I just wanted to call and uh, ask Jordan Maxwell. If uh, there's some sort of ancient meaning to Obama's symbol, or if it's a variation on something uh, ancient, well, if you go on my website to what's new, there's a little. And what symbol are we talking about? Well, I think it's the the, the, the sun with the uh, waves beneath okay. it. Okay. Okay. Uh, go on my website to jordanmaxwell.com, and then go to what's new, and there's a uh, six pictures there, and they tell a story. Uh, it's an extraordinarily controversial story those six pictures are telling you and um i'm not going to talk about it right now over the phone i mean over the over the air but just go on my website and go to what's new and check out the pictures and see if you understand what i was getting at on those pictures how do you decipher these things well it's very easy there's a library you go to libraries and look and look at like ucla usc and sit in the stacks down at usc for days and weeks on end going through all the old reference works all the encyclopedias from europe and checking out these the, the the words and the terms and what the ancient people said, and especially I like going down to Simon Wiesenthal's Center for Holocaust Studies, like I used to do for years, many years ago, and sit and talk with the rabbis. And it's fascinating how much people don't know about what's going on. It's, it's an incredible story of hidden knowledge, Let, wisdom that's hidden. Let's go to Alberta, Canada, on the international line. Gene, you're on with Jordan Maxwell. Hi. Hey, Gene. This is quite a thrill. Um, I just want to get your take on uh, this uh, swine flu thing. Do you think the forces of darkness are going to start making their play now? 
Well, yeah, I have my own opinion about that, but uh, it's not something I want to talk about publicly. I just, I'm always interested in the words and terms that government comes up with. You believe it's been concocted, though? Oh, there's no doubt in my mind about it. No doubt in my mind about that at all. And Illuminati? Why do they call it swine flu? Is there there some kind of a tip-off in that? Always in government, when they use words and terms... There's they a have a reason. reason. They're telling you something if you know how to read the symbols. What would swine... Well, I'm not going to get into it right now. Well, is what, but it, is it dangerous for us? Well, no, it's... it's um, I, I, don't want to, I don't want to go there right now. But we'll talk about that in private one day. You're still afraid for your life, aren't you? Yes, I am. I'm very, very afraid because when there are certain kinds of knowledge, which you know as well as I do, even if you don't know the knowledge, but you're smart enough to know that there are certain things you cannot talk about in public, especially on radio and before the public audience. There are certain things that will get you hurt, and you know that. Well, I have been privileged to be in the company of people who know that kind of knowledge, and I have been gathering it over the years. And so I have been told by government people, by FBI agents, by people who have contacted me and telling me, you better watch your mouth. You're being listened to. And, well, we like what you're doing. We like what you as a person. But somewhere along the line, you're going to overstep the boundaries and talk about something you're not supposed to, and you're going to be in trouble. I don't want that. I'm, I'm too old and tired to be... You know, <laughs> take him to jail. <laughs> I don't want to go to prison for something I talked about. So I, I, I got to be very careful what I Interesting. say. Interesting. Sedona, Arizona, it's got to be you, Blair. Hi, George. Hi. Thanks, sir. Hey, Jordan, I'd like your comment on the way the movie Zeitgeist uh, portrayed Christianity as a fraud in the same way it does the Federal Reserve. Because in my belief, the fraud may be certain practices of some organized, you know, religions because the basic precepts of Jesus are sound. For example, perfect love casts out fear. Yes, I understand. Uh, Let me say this, uh, as Kennedy would say, let me say this about that. Uh, I have the highest of, of admiration and regard for the Bible. And I believe that the New Testament story, uh, the story of Jesus and the complete New Testament, is a metaphor. The, especially the four Gospels are a metaphor, a symbolic story. And once you begin to look at the New Testament story of Jesus as a symbolic metaphor, then things begin to make sense. And I've been looking at this for 45 years, and I'm telling you, I have the highest respect for true Christianity, the, the teachings of Jesus. I have no problem with it all. But what my problem is is with corporate religions who have mistranslated, misunderstood, and misled the people into believing things which are not true. I'm telling you there's a profound story in the New Testament that you are not going to believe when you find out the key. When you get the key words and understand how this story flows, you begin to see the entire New Testament, especially the four Gospels, is an encoded metaphor. It's telling you something if you can read between the lines. And what you need to do is understand the, the symbols, what, they start, what is Jesus symbolically in the New Testament. Well, we can get into that later. Next up, we go to Cheyenne, Wyoming. John, it's your turn. Hey, John, go ahead. Good evening, George. Thank you very much sure for taking thing. my call. Uh, one thing I want to disagree with uh, Mr. Maxwell about is the all-seeing eye on top of the uh, pyramid of the dollar bill actually came not from Christian or Jewish texts. It came from the Egyptian Book of the Dead, 2000 B.C., and as an X, and I repeat X, Freemason, I can tell you, too, that the symbol of the 32nd degree mason is very scary because it's a two-headed eagle emanating from a pyramid. One head is white, one head is black, and it symbolizes, according to the masons, the two gods equally powerful, one of the heavens and one of the underworld. And when I asked some of my lodge brothers to explain that to me, their only response was, don't tamper with untempered mortar, which means watch your step, buddy boy, you're walking on thin ice. I understand. They're not what they purport to be, but I'm not afraid because whatever they do to me, and the same that they'll do to you, Jordan, whatever they do to us, God will punish them 100-fold. I appreciate your thought. Thank you. Jordan, uh, all I'm saying here is this. Look at the reference works. Go to the library. Go to a, uh, a Christian bookstore. Go to a seminary, like the full of theological seminary that I just live over there, their huge library. 
go to the symbols and I mean go to the reference book and you will see what the words actually mean. And the words for Messiah in the Old Testament means a triangle on top of a pyramid. And the word for Jesus in the New Testament is chief cornerstone, and which means in Greek a triangle on top of a pyramid. That's what the reference works say, all of them. Jordan, you think people like Alex Jones are sticking their necks out a little too oh, far? Oh, big time, way out. <laughs> I have the highest of admiration for Alex Jones. He's, uh, I'm not the man he is. I mean, he's, he's out there in, in the face of, of, of dark forces. I, I, I'm not that, I'm not that uh, brave of a man. I, <laughs> I, I would prefer to just do the best I can uh, without telling everybody the real, the rest of the story, because I'm afraid to tell the rest of the story. But can I've, they go and check out? their own rest oh, yeah. of the story? Oh, yeah. As a matter of fact, I would love to be able to sit and do a, a show with you and give you all the reference works around the world to go to, and you will begin to see it's all been there. They're not hiding anything. It's all it's all been there if you know how to read the symbols, know what the words mean. Maybe uh, I will take your files when you decide to retire. I, I, <laughs> I, I would make you a copy. You'd be surprised <laughs> at the kind of stuff that's in Let's there. Let's go to St. Louis. Jerry, first-time caller. Hi, Jerry. Hey, man, you guys are amazing. I just love to sit here and listen to you guys for the next three hours. Uh, thanks. Thank you. Both, both of you. I listen to you both as much as I can. Uh, one thing I just wanted to chime in here for a second is that, and I wish I, I wish I could be involved in that, that meeting when you give up all of your secrets and your files. And, <laughs> yeah. Jeez, Louise. They, well, they what took I'm think, Tesla's files. Well, Jordan. what I'm thinking about doing is making all of my files available as a as a uh, as a product. Just downloading my computer over the all the years, all these years, and just downloading it into uh, some kind of a product, and just get the files out there because I've got over 400 files just in one uh, on one. You know, and one computer. I got 300 files Jeez. filled with documents and pictures on all kinds of stuff. What subjects. did you do in the old days when we didn't have computers? I used to live at UCLA every day. I'd go down UCLA all night long until they kicked you out. I'd go down to USC, go up to Berkeley. I spent uh, days and weeks and months at the uh, seminary libraries just photocopying hundreds and hundreds of documents. It's just an incredible world of hidden knowledge that people who don't know this kind of thing, you don't know where to look. I learned a long time ago, many years ago, about the symbols and words and terms and how they work. And I'm telling you, it's an extraordinary story. I want to paraphrase something you told us a long time ago when you were dating as a teenager. You believe that the the father of a girl that you were dating might have been an ET. Yes, that's yeah. what I believe. That's just my personal belief. He knew but, too much. Yeah, he way he just blew me away with, with what he knew. And then they were gone. They and then they were gone. They just left one day and never came back, and I never heard from them again. But the things he told me and the way he played his cards, it just knocked me out. It was scary. And one day I'll have to maybe tell you again on the air when we have some time. I'll give you that experience again. Let's go to Vincent in Granbury, Texas. Final caller. Go ahead, Vincent. Hello, gentlemen. Hi. Uh, I'm really excited to hear Jordan Maxwell on the radio again. I've wanted to ask him for several months uh, if he saw anything portentous in the president of the United States of America bowing to the Queen of England <laughs> and the King of Saudi Arabia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That should tell you something. I don't know. Yeah, you better go back and look at that. And go, as I said, go on my website. It tells to, you that uh, his aides didn't tell him the protocol. Yeah. Huh? Well, it has to do with something called British Israel World Federation. You need to understand what the British has nothing Israel, to do with Israel. No, well, well, it has to do with Israel, but not really. Yeah. It has to do with a well, uh, with a secret society, a fraternal order that's been operating that in Europe that. for many, many, many years. It's called the British Israel Secret Society or the British Israel World Federation. And in one of their in-house, it's on my website. In their in-house publications, they talked about as far back as 1936-37. We're talking 1936-37 in their publications. They talked about how they're, they were targeting the date of mid-September of the year 2001 to establish the final new world order for Jesus. Under, uh, and it would be in the United States, and they said it would be in the middle of September. And they theorized it would be September possibly the 17th. 
in the year 2001. That's far back as 1936. In writing. Targeting. In writing. They targeted the date of September, mid-September of 2001 as the target date for the last and final move against the Republic of America. 